We've covered a lot of imposter stories, but this one takes the cake as one of the strangest ones ever. It involves a convicted murderer making a career out of impersonating a dead rock star in plain sight. The Tampa Bay Times would interview a man named Raymond Westlund. He had a man move into the property next to him in Florida who went by the name Daniel Catalano, or Danny C. Danny C claimed to be Vinnie Taylor, guitarist and original member of the doo-wop music group Sha Na Na, who won music praise from Jimi Hendrix and were big in the 1970s. The problem was the real Vinnie Taylor, whose legal name was Chris Donald, passed away in 1974 from a drug overdose. Danny C seemed to play the part, having a gold satin Sha Na Na jacket and necklace. He had the shades, he could play guitar, and he could really sing. Westland was convinced that his new neighbor was who he said he was. He accompanied him to gigs in West Florida where he played charity shows, sat in on other bands, and had adoring female fans. Danny C even had a website that announced the bad boy is back, claiming he was the most controversial member of Sha Na Na. In case anyone questioned his credibility, Danny C had a fake birth and baptism certificate in addition to a social security card for Chris Donald. If anyone ever claimed that the real Vinnie Taylor was dead, Danny C would claim he faked his death and adopted a new alias because he worked for the CIA. Danny C had a girlfriend named Jessica who told the writer Burt Kearns her boyfriend was at times deeply paranoid, recalling, he would be in bed at night and he would just jump out of the bed and run to the window. He never wanted people to come into the apartment and he would tell me a lot of times, whatever you do, just don't bring up the Sha Na Na thing. Then the facade came down. One night, Danny C was at a local pier fishing in 2001 when several U.S. Marshals hauled him away in handcuffs. As Westland soon learned, his neighbor was not a member of the Sha Na Na, but rather a convicted murderer who had escaped from prison and had been hiding in plain sight for over 25 years. This wasn't the only time a person or persons was pretending to be the Sha Na Na's. The band's pianist would tell writer Burt Kearns, there was a band out of Louisiana that was kind of a bar band, a show band that called them themselves Na Na Shaw. Yeah, Na Na Shaw. And that was in the early days of Google, where if you hired somebody and sat there and you typed their name in 10,000 times, you'd rise up in the Google listings. So it got to like, you'd look up Sha Na Na and Na Na Shaw would come up number three. So who was this imposter? His real name was Elmer Edward Solly. His criminal history began five years prior to the real Vinnie Taylor's death, when in 1969, he was convicted of beating his then girlfriend's two-year-old child to death in New Jersey. Solly would be sentenced to 25 years in state prison. It was shortly after he was sent to jail, he was transferred between prisons and he became friends with the jail psychologist. He would convince the psychologist that he should be allowed to visit his mother, who he claimed was terminally ill. It was during the first two visits that he was on his best behavior, but on his third trip, Solly asked to visit his girlfriend. He walked through the front door and escaped out the back. His disappearance wouldn't be reported for nearly six hours, giving him a leg up on the authorities. He wasn't seen or heard of for nearly 25 years. In 1999, the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office revisited the cold case with technology having drastically changed in the two and a half decades since he escaped. They worked with a forensic artist who digitally aged Solly's photos to show what he would look like in the present day. Those digitally aged photos pretty closely matched Solly's website photos. While the first several decades of impersonating the deceased guitarist may have been easy since the internet wasn't around, that didn't seem to deter the imposter. Solly's website where he impersonated Vinnie Taylor showed photos of him with politicians and police officers. The website also included some items that weren't true, including a section showing his supposed six-bedroom mansion with a recording studio, when in reality, the imposter lived in an apartment. Peter Erlinson, who was the sales and marketing director for Sha Na Na, who at the time still still toured for half the year would tell the Tampa Bay Times that he received emails from the people claiming the imposter duped them out of thousands of dollars, recalling, I would tell them the truth and then receive threatening emails from him. You may be asking, why didn't they just sue him? Well, Errolton would tell the paper that Solly would have loved being in the spotlight, saying, we really thought he was a flake, we had no idea, and how could we? That this guy was a murderer. What a way to hide out. Erlinson would admit to buying one of the imposter's albums, telling the Tampa Bay Times, if it's him, them, it's pretty good. And I emailed him once saying, if this is really you, you should have the guts to strike out on your own or impersonate someone really famous, like John Lennon. Solly's mother would pass away in 2000. It would be his mother who kept the rest of her family in line about talking about her son's whereabouts. Once she bit the dust, 
his family started to talk to investigators, and it would be his stepfather who told the authorities that Solly was living in Florida. The county sheriff's office was about to use the digitally aged photos on the nationally syndicated program America's Most Wanted. But before they could do so, U.S. Marshals had arrested Solly fishing in Florida. Deputy Marshal Billy Holmes would tell the Tampa Bay Times, he was shocked. After all those years, he probably didn't think we'd ever catch up to him. Solly's arrest would happen in 2001, but two years later, he would be granted parole for good behavior. Following his release from prison, he was last reported to be living in a welfare motel in New Jersey in 2004. He would pass away three years later in 2007. That does it for today's video. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe.